testing one. Testing.
Hi. If, if when you came in, you did not sign your name and put your email address down on that uh, clipboard, please do so because when we're done, when the last manner is done, where I will allow you, since you're here in person, to go ahead and sign up for, and request your mentor ahead of everybody else that's watching at home. So anyway, um, just so you realize that if, you're, if your name is not down on that paper, I won't consider you here. And you'll go back behind everybody. Thanks.
Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I just want to go over a couple things about the uh, mentoring program. We keep trying to fine tune things so that they're working better for the mentors and for you mentees. So uh, we've made uh, one big change on the information that is on the profiles. The profiles will be up later tonight or early tomorrow morning. It will have all of the pictures, mentors, and the uh, information that you're seeing tonight online on the website. From, uh, so go on the, our website, go to programs, go to mentor, and there will be a, um, a link for, uh, some in, for information and for the mentor profiles. And also the recording should be up also uh, sometime tomorrow if anybody wants to review anything. One of the things we asked our mentors to do this time was to answer a question about activities. Um, I'm old. I mean, we've been retired for 10 years now, so that makes me officially old. And I mean, there's stuff I can't do anymore. And I would like to know if I was signing up for some with someone, if I was going to be scaling cliffs. I've backed down from that before. And I probably would again, though I've done some really stupid things to get a good shot of a waterfall. I'll admit it. But anyway, so what we did was ask them to say, will there be walking that would be less than a mile, hiking, you know, bigger distances, indoor, outdoor, and climb. So that could be climbing steep hills or scaling a cliff so that Bev can take a picture of a waterfall. So anyway, that's one of the differences you'll see. It's something to keep in mind. I always always uh, stress to please look at the availability of your mentor. I do Sunday mornings and we do Thursday night um, teams meetings for critiques and review. I don't do every Sunday morning, but don't sign up with me if you can't miss church on Sunday morning. You know, I, I find nature is kind of my church, you know, but, you know, not everybody is like me. And so anyway, that's something to keep in mind. If you work Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and your mentor meets on Wednesday morning, it's not going to work. So besides your look at, oh, I love the pictures that person showed tonight. I like the idea of what they're doing. I think even more important than that is when is that mentor available for you? And if they're not available at a time that is going to work for you, please don't sign up from, for them. And please don't call me at 1030 at night crying because you thought that they didn't really mean it. So anyway. Um, in those situations, I try to work around it, but I usually can't because most people at, at that time were full. So, you know, it happens. Uh, the other thing is you do have a list of the mentors, the first page you were handed. It does have the order of presentation, so there's room to take some notes like yes, no, maybe, ugh. You know, whatever it is you feel. So, you know, that's your, your sheet. Take your notes, and, but also with everything being online, uh, it does help uh, you to go back if you need and, and take care of things. Uh, email opens up 9 o'clock tonight. You have to email the information that is listed on this sheet. If any of that information is missing, I will send it back to you, and you're going to have to start over. 
I am not looking up old email addresses or going on the roster and trying to figure out who uh, photo, photo girl at Gmail is. Put your name in the body of the email and all of that information because it is information that's important to us when assigning a mentor to you. Um, and if you, you could be the first person tonight to send an email in. If it doesn't have this information, you could end up 30th in line by tomorrow. So um, I would say please do it. Just, just fill it out and make it easy for Catherine and I to try and figure out who is emailing us. Also, Catherine, Catherine, can God, would you please stand up? Catherine volunteered to help me out with this, and she did a lot of behind the scenes stuff. She made a lot of phone calls to people, and I really appreciate it. And she was very successful at twisting a few arms to be mentors. So, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Any real quick questions on anything? No? Okay. Our first guy up is Dan Lester, who unexpectedly went out of town. Everything's fine. They were invited to somewhere with friends, and they went. So Dan Lester lives in Broadview Heights. Another thing to think about is your mentor anywhere in the vicinity. We have people from Akron. I talked to someone down from around Wadsworth. Uh, we have people out way out east. I live in North Ridgeville, so we cover a huge area. Consider where your mentor lives and where they might be going. You'll have a chance after uh, we're done with the presentations to discuss that with the person or people that you're interested in, but it is something to think about. <coughs> All right, Dan uh, likes Sony. He shoots Sony, and he prefers to mentor Sony shooter who are beginners. He's a good technical guy, and for those of you with Sony cameras and you're a little overwhelmed by them, he could be your guy. And uh, each mentor has a group of pictures, and these are Dan's. I think that's, is that in Brexville somewhere? Or, yeah. Deer Lick Falls? I think. I have a feeling that might have been right here in Broadview Heights. And I know, because I took that same picture at the wilds, that, he, that eagle posed very nicely. And there we go. So Dan does a variety of pictures, as uh, types of uh, pictures, as you can see. He uh, he does people. He does landscapes. He does some macro, a lot of macro work actually. And so anything there? Again, check the website tomorrow and look at the profile for additional information. Our next guy up is from Brexville, Brian Riordan. Am I supposed to stand someplace? You're not on camera. Not on camera? Oh, good. That's really great. OK, I'm, uh, my name is Brian O'Riordan. I'm from Brexville, and I don't care, and you shouldn't care. I don't care where you are. Um, most of the mentoring I do is one-on-one. -on -one, but. Uh, I'm more than willing to travel, and sometimes we can compromise somewhere in between. So I've had uh, mentees from essentially all over, and that's fine. I, I, I like to do that that way. Uh, like I said, most of the stuff that I do is one-on-one. -on -one. Um, this is a little bit different than a lot of other people's approach. I don't do field trips all that much, and the main reason is that it's hard to organize them and I'm not good at that. <laughs> and we've got people 
especially if we've got people spread out all over, it's really hard to get everybody together in one uh, spot. I also like the one-on-ones because it gives me a chance to look at each of your individual photos and to talk to you about those photos and what I see and what you see and, and see where we go from there. My basic approach, I think you'll see it when you look at our, the profile online, is that the things that I like uh, to talk to about are um, composition, uh, communication, and creativity. <clears throat> and essentially what that means is that I'm looking at photography like a language. And the language has different types of structure and you're trying to convey some sort of message to other people and you have to get your grammar right. Well, that's kind of the way I look at uh, photography. Um, judges, you will find they speak their own language. And you're going, if you want to communicate with the judges, you're going to have to speak their language. But I'm more interested in you speaking your language, saying what you want to say and how you want to do it. Some of my most um, favorite authors are people who invent words. So I, that's a new way of communicating, and I'm perfectly happy with uh, non-conventional approaches. Um, I shoot everything, and actually some of my targets actually survive. Uh, but I don't, hang, don't have any real preferences. This, this um, I, I'd like to go through a few different photographs just to show you some of the things I'm interested in. This is a photograph from a hill town in Italy, uh, I think Cortona. And I was walking through there and I said, oh, this is, this is quaint. It's Italy, it's perfect. I'm gonna take a picture of it. I took a picture of it and then when I got back and looked at it, I found that what I had captured wasn't at all what I saw. I was so impressed with being in the old hill town that I looked at this and all I saw was this. But if you look at the picture, you've got wires, cars, uh, you've got um, uh, t television, antennas. You've got all sorts of junk that kind of messes, messed up the image. So I said, well, that's what Photoshop is for, right? And I went through and took out each and every piece that I thought didn't belong, and I got what I had saw, what I saw, what I had seen when I was in Italy. That was Italy for me. Next. Oh, do I get it? You can do it if you want to. Which way do I do it? There we go. Okay. My people picture. Okay, sometimes you, I, I like to do candidates, and um, I like to catch uh, people at inopportune moments or opportune ones. And this, I thought, was characteristic of a hail farm um, reenactment. And this guy was tired, it was hot, it was terrible, it was wet, and he decided to take a nap. So, I like that. What am I not doing? Here, click that. This? This arrow. This arrow. Yeah. Aha. Okay, nature. Uh, that's Frank. Uh, <laughs> I used to meet uh, Frank at the Black Sand Beach and uh, on uh, the Big Island uh, every year that uh, I'd get there, and uh, he'd always show up. It was just, just kind of amazing, and I caught him once posing for me. I'm sure it was the exact same sea, sea turtle. I do black and white. This one uh, is more of an attempt to be artistic about the whole thing. I like the black and white aspect of it. I like the contrast. I like the shadows. I like all of that. But I also wanted to have more texture in what I was shooting. And so that's what I added. It's a real flower. Uh, caught that at Longwood Gardens in, uh, in Pennsylvania. And it's a giant blue poppy, and that's no story, nothing. It's just a beautiful flower. What about the background? Well, the background, um, that was interesting because in order to get the right bokeh, it had a, it's a matter of uh, doing depth of field and looking well beyond the flower and to say what was back there. And uh, I had to pick 
I mean, first of all, Longwood Gardens had maybe 3,000 of these to pick from. <laughs> I was looking for one that, I, that had a pleasant arrangement and that behind it had colors that I thought were complementary. Didn't add that, that, that is the way the background was, blurred. Okay, sometimes I get creative in other ways. And uh, this, uh, there's really no story behind this except I wanted to create a mood. And so that's what this does, hopefully. It's just uh, kind of uh, a little bit of a oil uh, paint filter applied to a pleasant scene at uh, Indigo Lake. And I think that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Sorry? Availability, I'm available you know, all the time, pretty much. <laughs> and uh, let's see, with camera, I shoot Nikon, but uh, I don't care what you shoot. You probably uh, are shooting, you know much more about your camera than I do, but we, we can figure out almost any question that you want. Buttons. Uh, hello, my name is Rick Mills. Uh, Dennis Wirt and I have been doing uh, the mentor program for about five years now. And um, over the years, we decided to put together uh, more or less a, a course curriculum, uh, starting with very basic trying to go into intermediate. And uh, as far as what we shoot, we shoot Nikon, and we'll show you the availability here in just a minute. So the picture on the left is the, um, we have five outings that we do. And uh, we try to, during the five outings, introduce uh, everything in composition. I take care of that, and Dennis takes care of the technical side of the camera. And for instance, the first outing is at Everett Road Cover Bridge. And at the top, it lists um, the information where it is, uh, directions. And then we have a listing of the different things that we're going to cover during this outing. And um, like, I'll take care of line, shape, form, patterns, textures, reflections, everything that is used to make a, a good composition. And during the, this outing, Dennis will cover uh, a lot of different topics on um, technical aspects of the camera. And we'll list here in just a minute uh, the different things that we're going to cover. And it's a lot. We move pretty quick through the program. It's a five-week course, <clears throat> so we have a lot to cover. And then uh, we talk about um, what to expect at the location. For instance, I say in here that there's a short hike from the bridge down to the river, because we will be taking pictures in the river. So wear boots. Um, and then on the next sheet, uh, these are the other outings we go to. The next one will be at, um, at Viaduct Park, Bedford Falls. And then we'll be going to Station Road in the, in the valley. And then we'll be doing the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And the last one will be at Berea Falls. And here is the schedule. We'll be starting on September 13th, and that's a team's meeting on Wednesday. Every week we'll have a team's meeting where we'll introduce the material we're gonna cover on Saturday. And the first one, obviously we won't have anything to cover. We'll be explaining everything we're gonna do and what we uh, hope that you'll get out of, the, uh, out of the meeting. Then on the 16th is at Everett Road Cover Bridge at nine o'clock, and we meet in the parking lot and kind of uh, go over everything that we're gonna do uh, and then the uh, next week, we're all going to be in our group we have now. I should say there's a CPS mentor group, and then there's a mentor group. And the mentor group is all the people that we've accumulated over the years. <laughs> and uh, about every week, we all go out somewhere. So Wednesday, uh, or, I'm sorry, Saturday <clears throat> the 23rd, we're all going down to Hawking Hills and for uh, three-day, two-and-a-half-day weekend. 
<clears throat> the next official outing will be at Viaduct Park on September 30th. And again, on the Wednesday before, I send out an invitation to everybody about uh, the team's meeting at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. And that's when we critique and go over everything from the previous outing. And uh, we have all just nothing but wonderful comments about everybody's pictures. And <clears throat> then on the fourth outing, we'll be at Station Road. We'll do a lot of landscape, and we also incorporate lifestyle photography with landscape where we practice uh, depth of field, and uh, Dennis will be going over all of that. The uh, next outing will be, these are actually switched, the next outing will be at Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, and we'll be doing uh, night photography, uh, blue hour photography at that outing. And um, one of the main things you'll find that we're doing is uh, working with uh, reflections, and it's a very interesting outing. The last outing will be at Berea Falls, and uh, that's always been a favorite of everybody. Okay, and then uh, Dennis will go over what we're going to um, do over the, we're gonna introduce all these topics at the first outing, but these are what we're going to do throughout the, the five week uh, course. Dennis. I'm Dennis Wirt, glad to see so many people here tonight. This is great. Uh, if you uh, sign up with us uh, in the, through an email, uh, you'll get an introductory letter that will describe most of the things that Rick has talked about already. Uh, you'll get uh, uh, information on how to access the Teams uh, software. Uh, you get a schedule of the events, much like Rick had posted up here. Uh, you'll also get a list of all the people that will be in our group with their contact, contact information so that you can uh, get to know one another and possibly get together, go out and shoot on your own together. Uh, you'll also get uh, information on how to submit your photos uh, for our Wednesday night meetings. Uh, and uh, there will also be an email that will include the technical documents and some videos on the aspects of photography that we're gonna, we're gonna have in there. Our goal is to help you get the best you can out of your camera and uh, to consistently get sharp images as you're uh, progressing through all of this. Uh, we'll be talking about back button focus, what it is and how to use it. Uh, depth of field, hyperfocal distance, uh, exposure and metering. Uh, we'll be discussing use of circular polarizers and ND filters. Uh, we get into doing long exposure photography at the night shoot at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame talk about focus stacking and introduce you, if you're not aware of uh, HDR, high dynamic range photography. Uh, we'll be doing uh, golden hour and blue hour shooting. And uh, in addition to the information that was on the data sheets, uh, you'll get a map uh, to get to the location in addition to the GPS coordinates. Uh, there won't be any tests or anything, <clears throat> but we will critique your images if you choose to have us do so and we'd be doing that on our Wednesday night meetings. As far as activity level, it's all outdoor shooting. Uh, just walking, some moderate climbing, going down to the river to take pictures or possibly at Station Road Bridge, there's some swampy areas, you might get into that. Uh, our way isn't the only way of doing things. There's a wealth of information on the internet, so I encourage you to expand your knowledge and look elsewhere, and eventually you'll find what works best for you. Uh, <clears throat> we don't do weddings, portraits, astrophotography, or sports. There are other mentors in this room that uh, excel at those things. So, you know, you'd want to be talking to them. So thanks for attending. And uh, anybody have any questions? Oh, oh. Uh, this is uh, really interesting. We have uh, two of our former students with us tonight, uh, Dave Korosek and Keto Thomas, if you guys stand up. Uh, they're gonna be assisting us. They have really come a long way from when they started with us as mentors, as mentees, and have uh, uh, graciously accepted uh, our offer of them working with us and with a little push, maybe get them into being mentors at some time in the future. So, thanks. <laughs>
<coughs> yes, question in the back. Did I say here that all of your field trips are on Saturday mornings? That's correct. Saturday mornings, for four of them, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame will be an evening shoot, blue hour at the Rock Hall. And Wednesdays? And Wednesdays, team meetings. It's 7 o'clock. Yes? What hours? Saturday mornings from 9 until about noon. And uh, generally on Saturdays when we finish, uh, we try to arrange a place to go and get lunch so we can talk about what's, what uh, transpired and uh, just to socialize, get to know one another a little, <clears throat> excuse me, socialize a little bit to get to know one another better. Okay, thank you. Next up is Chris Brosworth. Thank you. So um, my commitment and interest in being a mentor comes out of the years that I've been helping out with the fundamentals class. So the best way I look at this is I know that a lot of people come out of fundamentals kind of like, yeah, I didn't, I missed that part. I don't quite understand this part of my camera and so forth. So. I would say I'm, I'm going to take you from beginner, refreshing, or fundamentals, and somewhat a lot of the topics that um, that you heard earlier, um, trying to get you more solidified with with your camera. I don't have any particular um, camera. I shoot Sony, Nikon, Canon, Fuji. I can do Nikon just because of helping with fundamentals. I'm somewhat familiar with all the cameras. My time is Saturday mornings, nine to eleven. We've been known to go a little bit longer than that. I will do a night shot uh, or night shoot. Hopefully, the weather will will cooperate with us. And sometimes people's night schedules are kind of hard to coordinate. But the last couple times in outings, we've been able to do a night shot, and it's it's really fun. Um, so nine to eleven on Saturday mornings. I generally do like three three shoots, a couple of hours each time is enough, I think, to get us to where you're you're comfortable. I keep my group small. Um, I've had as, as many as one who's sitting here. <laughs> Hopefully she's going to go the next level up. Um, I don't have any particular genre. I just shoot general photography. And the cool thing about being small, if you decide, if I've got somebody that wants, has an interest in some macro, we'll do some macro out in the field. All of the trips are going to be pretty much like in the metro parks. I'm a west sider, as you saw, but I'm willing to go as far as, um, as a national park. But most of them are... Um, Metro Parks areas uh, more on the west side, which a lot of these were taken. Uh, I have two knee replacements, so we're not going to be climbing a lot of mountains. Um, I, and I will throw in, we'll do some waterfall. The Berea Falls that, uh, that Rick Mills and Dennis shoot at, I consider to be at least an intermediate climb, especially coming back up. But, you know, we can look at it, and if you decide you want to do that, I have done it with my knee replacements, so we can go that far. Um, what am I missing? Um, I just enjoy working with, with people with things that happen in the fundamentals. We kind of like feed you with a, a, guard, a water a fire hose in, in fundamentals. And people come out going, yeah, I remember we talked about exposure. So we'll cover exposure and depth of field and how to keep your images sharp. We can do some slow motion. This is a night shot that we actually, we didn't do that one. But we went, we went to the inner harbor to do our night shots. I think that might be it. So um, questions. What didn't I hit? I know that's kind of fast, but I like to keep it simple. None? Oh, yes. Do you have any kind of a Zoom meeting like before or after your presentation? Okay. okay. The question was, um, do I have any Zoom meeting like the Teams meetings that you've heard before? I haven't primarily because um, my evenings are kind of hit or miss and I don't have an evening that I can always be sure that I can do that but um, I can do we, we can do one where you either bring your images on your phone you can email them to me um, we can share them together I can do um, we transfer where you share share images that's one part I haven't really done a lot of but I can definitely do some critiquing with you okay anybody else okay Joe. Hi, everyone. My name is Joe Kalecki. Um, this is my first time uh, doing the mentoring program. So um, I like to wrote myself a script. It's only about eight pages long, so bear with me. Uh, 
I'm just playing. Um, I consider myself a professional and a serious hobbyist photographer. Um, <clears throat> I am a fan of photography, of course. Uh, it's my, my number one hobby. Um, I also enjoy a number of other things as far as computers, muscle cars, uh, target shooting, um, an array of other things. But on top of all those, photography is really my, my true passion. Um, because I'm new and because I'm <clears throat> uh, relatively new to the group here as well, I'm going to give you a little bit of history about myself. Um, cameras and photography have always captured my interest, uh, as long as I can remember. Uh, I remember being a kid and uh, hiking with my dad. And while we were hiking, uh, he would always <clears throat> uh, have his Minolta SLR mechanical camera on his side. And I remember watching him take pictures, and I remember thinking to myself, how cool is it that you can take this machine, right? You can look through it, and with, uh, <clears throat> with a few, uh, with, with the right lens and the right dial and settings, you can capture any, whatever image you're looking at, pretty much instantaneously. Um, since then, I have, Always been inspired and, and uh, enjoyed photography. Um, it, is, it was at that it was very at a very young age that I realized that uh, photography was going to be a part of my life and a part of a way of a way of uh, the way I would express myself as an artist. Um, since 2004, I uh, my wife and I have uh, owned and operated a business called Collective Photography LLC. Uh, through this business, we have uh, well. I, I have, I'm the photographer, she does the business part, that's what makes it work so well. <laughs> um, but uh, so through this business with my wife, um, I have been able to photograph countless weddings, uh, portrait sessions, uh, events, uh, sporting events, all, all sorts of things. Um, weddings and portraits being the primary focus of my business, but uh, it's, it's, you know, so over the close to 20 years now, it's been quite a trip and uh, I'm ready to, to share some of that now with with people. Um, <clears throat> that's the professional side of my photography. Uh, the hobby side of my photography is more based along the lines of just general photography. One of my, um, one of my true passions is wildlife and nature photography, but wildlife uh, in particular, um, <clears throat> uh, I find myself focusing, no pun intended, uh, primarily on wildlife, <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, uh, primarily on birds. Um, I do have a passion for uh, photographing, especially smaller birds, uh, because they're so hard to photograph. Uh, it's great when you can actually get them to sit for more than a second and actually get, you know, two or three shots off versus just maybe one. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> talking about mentoring, um, if you're interested in mentoring with me, uh, what I would like to do is actually start off our, our journey together by um, focusing on local wildlife and nature photography. Uh, from there, we can do whatever you'd like. Um, I can discuss, you know, the wedding photography, portraits, if you're interested in something like that. Uh, I have experience with, um, with uh, natural and um, strobe lighting. Uh, so we can move into uh, whatever you'd like to do um, my availability is most weeknights and then Saturday mornings work really well for me. So if you're up for getting up early, I mean, I'm talking about before sunrise even, and heading out to do some nature photography, I'm all for it. Um, we'll communicate that as we move along. Uh, again, I'm, I'm new, so <laughs> you're gonna have to bear with me. I don't have the, uh, the itinerary uh, quite yet, but uh, we will definitely get that going. Um, some of my images here. Uh, <clears throat> what did I do? So this little guy was <clears throat> actually uh, in a in a park near my home. It's the uh, Streetsboro uh, Park. He actually did sit there for <laughs> about a good maybe I don't know 20 seconds, which uh, with my D500. Um, I was able to get a number of shots. I think I took all of, oh, geez, close to 50 shots of him. This one was my favorite. Uh, the rest of them were subpar, but um, so he was uh, posing in a way that just created this, this beautiful shot. Um, this bald eagle, 
Uh, my wife and I actually took a trip to Maine last year. Uh, first off, if you've never been to Maine, I highly recommend it. It was my first time going, and I'm hooked. I can't wait to go back. Uh, we took a boat ride uh, up to um, Nova Scotia, uh, and along the way, there were bald eagles everywhere. There were, um, I'm, I'm, there must have been hundreds of them. They were all perched on the cliffs, on the rocks, uh, on some of the islands in the water. And so, of course, I was in my, my heyday with my D500. I had, uh, you know, the, I think I filled up two cards <laughs> with, with eagle shots. Uh, so this is, this is one of those from that particular, that particular time. Um, this is actually my niece, Ella. Uh, I did her senior portraits earlier this year. Um, and this uh, was a number of uh, photographs that we took of her. But this one, I just, I like this one because it's, I like her expression. I like the way she's standing. Uh, of course, the, uh, you know, the, the image plane that she's standing on versus the, the depth of field is just, in my opinion, it came out really nice. Um, what, else, what else do I have here? Uh, this is my other niece, Sophie. So <laughs> uh, we did her senior portraits as well. And then this is down by, I can never remember the name. It's the Waterfall in Solon. Uh, I can't think of the name of the waterfall. Anybody, anybody know this one? It's Cory Rock. Yes. Um, actually a beautiful park uh, and a beautiful waterfall. If you can uh, get a chance to go, there's a, a spot when you go down to the water, there's actually a spot right where, right where I'm standing, as a matter of fact, where you actually duck down and uh, shoot up <coughs> along the water. And it's, it's really, uh, it's something to see. It's, it's quite beautiful. Um, are there any questions? OK. So next up is Karen Isaac and mm -hmm. Bruce Orr. Most of you guys know yeah. Bruce, I'm sure. He's been a mentor many times. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. There you go. Okay. This is a photo that Karen took. <laughs> it's very nice. Uh, my name is Bruce Orr, and I'll give you a, a, a little background here. Uh, I've, done, I've been doing photography all my life. My, uh, my parents and grandparents were all travelers, so we we're always taking pictures of all, all kinds of stuff. So a lot of, a lot of what I would take pictures of are the nature and cityscapes and, and, and things like that. And I'm, I'm self-taught, you know, a lot, of, a lot of books, you know, and, and a lot of hitting my head, head against the wall. But one time, many years ago, I took a class over at the Art Institute, and it was a, uh, a black and white film class. And the instructor was Alan Ross, and he was a uh, assistant to Ansel Adams. And the way he ran his class, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. We, we just got together, we went out to an area, took photos, he would, he would wander around, touch base, see how you were doing, answer questions, you know, and if there was something really, you know, really interesting to talk about, we'd, we'd, we'd gather together and, and talk about things. And then afterwards, you know, we'd develop the photos, then discuss them, and then, you know, uh, continue that over and over again. And it worked out really nice. I, you know, it was, I thought it was a, a nice way of learning. It was, it was kind of like you were, you were educated without knowing you were being taught type of thing. So it was, it was, it was, a, it was a great experience. And when you look back in the photos, you, you could really see the, 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 the progress that you made. So I'm, I'm stealing many pages out of his book on, on, my, on the sessions that, that I hold for doing that. And um, yeah, why don't, you, why don't you do that here? Yeah. So whoops, there, there, there's one. Uh, so the, the, this is uh, uh, obviously pitched out the flats that we're doing. So be, you know, the night shots would be something we could, we could do if you're interested in doing it, uh, something in the evening. Uh, normally, we were thinking about doing in the mornings uh, on the weekends. But the, on the evenings, we could arrange something as well for doing that, you know. Um, mostly nature, the city and that, not, not too much people. Uh, that. Uh, that's taking it the wilds, <laughs> kind of thing, yeah. So we'll do that. Yeah. That's Blue Hen Falls. Sadly, that's a difficult one to get to these days. But um, so that's... Uh, is that mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this is Karen, and Karen was a, a mentor of mine, and she added, she, so she, she added a little twist to, yeah, sorry, we, we added, she had a little twist to the uh, thing, she had a little project, 
that she wanted to do, to do a photograph for, for one of her uh, bathrooms. And I thought having a little project was a nice way of giving a little focus to and direction to what she was working on. So I'm going to toss that out, that having a little thing to, to work on is not necessary, but, it, it, but it's helpful to write a little, a little direction for it, what you're doing. And, and that was a helpful little thing. So, so it's Karen. All right. My name is Karen Isaac. Um, I started at the club four years ago and took the beginner's course. And oh, we went down and did some crazy stuff downtown Cleveland with our with our lenses. They had the Christmas lights down there. Um, anyways, I started with the beginner's course here, and I had done photography years ago and kind of just was learning. And then when I had my son, I kind of stopped, unfortunately. But I had the film camera, and um, gosh, things have changed so much since then. But anyways, I picked it up again. My son is now married. I have more time to work on all this fun stuff, work on myself. That was Viaduct Park. When I started out with, Bruce was my mentor right before COVID hit. Oh, hi, Fran. <laughs> I had the bare minimum basic equipment. I had the cheapest entry level Nikon you could get. I had inexpensive lenses and I didn't know what I was doing. So actually we got this picture and you know, Bruce was great. He would, he would just go down there. We would suggest. Fran was in our group. And where do you guys want to go? I'm like, I'd like to do a waterfall. Let's go over there and do this waterfall. And, you know, I would study before I would go out and try to learn the settings. But then, you know, he would help me with exactly how to get those right. So I do really like that one. I can't believe I took that at mentoring because a lot of them do not look like that. <laughs> but anyways, um, what we did was we met before we started the whole program and we just the three of us met and he said where do you want to go what are you interested in we did downtown cleveland we did leaves we did um, wildlife we did birds obviously we did waterfalls so and then we picked you know where depending on where you live where we would meet how far we're going to go and what do you like we do kind of like nature but we're willing to do yeah, all kinds of stuff. So I think that's that's about it. Okay, that's all. Yes, Fran. There's no squirrel pictures, sorry. I do shoot a lot of squirrel pictures. It all happened during COVID. I, I had nothing better to do with my life than shoot squirrel pictures out the window. Um, yeah, I should have brought one of those. Okay. Um, we are going to be um, weekend mornings. And evenings, if, you know, an occasional evening. Okay. Okay. Either. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, either yeah. or. Yeah, either I think or. we'll have an initial meeting and then we'll just decide. We're pretty flexible, so. Okay. I'm from Northfield and Old, Old Brooklyn. Brooklyn. We kind of met at the Cuyahoga Valley National Park and not too, too far from here. But if, if you want to go further, we're going to do that too. So depending what you want. Okay, we're good. Okay. I think it's, yeah. Um, it's going to be up to each mentor, really. You're up against Thanksgiving, so some people will be traveling and stopping then. Some will go on. That's up to the mentor themselves. So. There's no, there's no hard stop, I don't think. No, no. Yeah. All right. Okay, Mr. Sidebar. No. I'm Dave Saborik. Um, let's talk about availability first, since that just came up with uh, Bruce and Karen. Uh, I'm retired, so you and I can get together any time. Uh, but as they just suggested, I think it would be a good idea uh, for whoever in a group with me 
for all of us to get together at, at one specific time and at that time sort of set a schedule of where we want to go and what we want to do. So uh, it's pretty flexible and lots of times I'll just, uh, whoever's in my group, I'll say, hey, I'm going here, you want to join me? Come on, let's go. Uh, and so, so that'll happen too. I shoot, uh, I'm from Monroe Falls. If you don't know where that is, it's sort of between Stowe and Kent uh, and, and Talmadge, a little town there, uh, about a half an hour from here. But uh, my photographer takes me outside anywhere in the, in the greater Cleveland area. And when I'm not in the greater Cleveland area, my photography takes me there too. So uh, we can get together anywhere uh, in the greater Cleveland, Akron area. I shoot Sony, uh, but I wouldn't say I'm a, a Sony expert by any means. Uh, I just bought a new camera, a Sony uh, 7R5, but I use it at the most fundamental uh, level. So uh, if you're looking for someone who shoots Sony that can uh, show you all the ins and outs of that camera. Uh, probably not your guy. We'll go out and, and use uh, use the basic settings and, and get the kind of images uh, that we're looking for. I shoot almost anything, mostly outside. I don't do tabletop. I don't do uh, portraits and, and that kind of thing. But anything outside. So. Let's see if I can figure this thing out. I pushed completely the wrong button. <laughs> oh, there's my name again. Oh, there we go. You sure? I got good instructions here. Let's try again. Aha! So I do shoot people. And, and I really enjoy shooting people. But I'm, I'm not a street photographer. And I don't shoot any people uh, without talking to them or at least asking them if I can take their picture. So this is one of the places I will be going while we're together, which is Day of the Dead up in uh, near West Side in Cleveland. Uh, <clears throat> so I'll be going there and, and I'll invite you to come along if, if you want to. Uh, this young lady was uh, a student in high school She's uh, Hispanic heritage. She and her family went to Day of the Dead up in Cleveland every year. And this particular year, though, uh, her mom had died of cancer. And so she had actually built this ofrende, uh, this altar in honor of her mom. And, and she and I had a, had a nice conversation uh, about her, her altar and her mom. This guy's got a story attached to him. Uh, this was taken at the uh, Yankee Peddler, which will be coming up while we're together. And, and I'll be heading there at least one weekend. And I'll invite you to join me if you want. And maybe we can find uh, a mutual weekend to go. And let, let me tell you a little story about this guy. He, uh, he was showing off a lot of C Civil War paraphernalia and was quite the, the expert on the Civil War. I asked him if I could take his picture and uh, he actually said, wait a minute. He put on his jacket for me and he said, shoot away. So I did and I got maybe uh, 20 different shots of him. So my son liked this picture, and my son has an office of his own, and I made him, uh, I printed and matted and framed 16 by 20 image of this guy, and he hung it in his office. Well, uh, one day a fellow came in and he said, Joe, I really like that picture. And he said, my dad took that picture. So Joe calls, Joe comes, uh, comes to me and he says, Steve really likes that picture. So I printed another one, matted it, 16 by 20 frame, and I gave it to Steve. 
Not too long after that, Steve developed cancer. And he hung this picture, he took it to the hospital with him. And it comforted him, it's what he told me. He and I never met until one Wednesday evening, I went to visit him at his home at his request. And he said, Dave, this picture has comforted me a lot. I actually talk with this man. He took this picture to the hospital with him. When he was in his hospital bed in his living room, he hung the picture up uh, where he could see it and uh, was great comfort to him. He died on the Sunday after I saw him. So even, even a random picture uh, could end up having really special meaning to someone. So this was Yankee Peddler. Somewhere I'll be going this year. Somewhere I'll invite you to come and come in and join me. So I was just out walking. Uh, this was in October. All these pictures are from the time period that we'll be together. Uh, and I, I don't take, I wouldn't consider myself a macro photographer, but I do a lot of close-up photography and I really like it. Uh, a lot of flowers, plants, and, and different things that catch my eye. This was in October. And uh, I was really surprised to see the combination here of, uh, what's that flower? Black-eyed Susan, thank you. Of a black-eyed Susan that was still recognizable as a black-eyed Susan and had frost on it. Uh, so I took a lot of different pictures from different angles uh, of this little flower. And it's one I really like, and, and I brought it with me tonight just as an example of a type of close-up photography that I really like to do. Ooh, a double one. So, uh, Stowe Metro Parks has a hiking spree in the fall during the time we're together. I do the hiking spree. I probably go to 10 or 11 different Summer County Metro Parks and take pictures, and it's a wonderful time of the year uh, to do that. And I don't know if you've, you've gone to Wendy Park, uh, when the butterflies are there, it's coming up with sometime in the next couple of weeks probably. Uh, and a couple of years ago, the butterflies were just draped on, on all the trees at Wendy Park. This one was last year, uh, quite, not quite the number of butterflies, but, but still worth the trip. So I'll be probably heading up there once I hear the butterflies are around a couple times. You'll be invited to join me uh, to do that. Oh, look! Another picture of the Great Falls of Tinker's Creek taken at Viaduct Park. How many have we seen tonight? Uh, this is the sixth or so. It's, uh, it's sort of a hidden gem, and it's, it is a wonderful place to take uh, photos. And I have one other uh, picture that I sent to, to Bev that I was sort of hoping she would include. It was of a red panda. And I wanted her to include it because I love going to the zoo to take pictures. And, and there are so many really expressive and interesting animals that make wonderful, wonderful photographs. So I certainly will be going to the zoo many times uh, during our time together, and maybe we can uh, work out a mutual time to do that. So I think that's my, yep, that was my last one. So should I ask for questions? Well, like I said, we'll, we'll, I'm available. I'm retired. So, uh, but we'll get together, you know, whoever's in my group, we'll get together sometime 
and, and work out times when we can meet and, and maybe, hey, I'm going to the zoo. If you want to come, okay. Is just one of you want to come out of 27 in my group? That's fine. I'll go, you know, we'll go up and, and we'll practice our fundamental photography together. So yeah, I'll be, uh, I am available. We'll try to uh, set up a time for the group to meet and, and set up some dates and times. Uh, and then I'll let you know when I'm out and about. Uh, somehow we will do that, yeah. Uh, I, did, I did venturing once before with, uh, during COVID and I hated it. Uh, it was it was so hard just to get together and everything. So, uh, but we did set up a little uh, group on on uh, on the computer where we could uh, take a look at, at each other's pictures and and sort of critique. Yeah. <laughs> Bev, thank you. Me either. I have a bum knee, and if you're going to to anywhere with me, to a park, to a garden, to a zoo, uh, to Yankee Peddler, we are walking very slow, or you're gonna go ahead of me, and I'll catch up with you. And while we're there, we don't need to be doing the exact same thing at the exact same time, you know. I might be taking a picture of my little, what was that flower? Black eyed, Black -eyed Susan with frost. And you might be, you know, around the corner working on a completely different picture. But uh, it's a good question. And uh, I have a bum day. I move slowly. And I don't do that falls at, at Viaduct Park. You got to hike down there, and uh, I took that picture a couple years ago. Maybe I don't hike down there this year. I don't know. Yeah. Fundamentals, fundamentals. So, uh, like I said, if you want questions answered about your particular camera, uh, I'm not your guy. I, I, I'm not good with my own cameras. Matter, I can do the fundamentals on my own camera. Uh, but you know, I'm looking at, at things like focus and depth of field and. Uh, using aperture to your advantage, using uh, uh, shutter speed to your advantage, things like that. Okay. Rick Wetterall, Wetterall am I saying that yeah. correctly? Close enough? Yeah, close From enough. North Olmsted? It's actually North Royalton. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'm 15 so minutes, sorry. 15 minutes to the west, we're fine. I misread it. Yeah. I want to know what the sign-up fee is for Rick and Dennis's class. <laughs> <laughs> is there a monthly on that, or how's, how's that work? We so. accept <laughs> donations. Um, a brief background on myself. I've been a member of the club since... 2006, 2007, I took the fundamentals class, and after the class, whatever it was, the five, six, seven weeks, I thought to myself, I can't lose this information stream of all the, the members here and how helpful they were and answering questions and showing this and showing that. So uh, I joined the club, um, became instrumental in the, the interior of the club for a six-year period. I was vice president, sat on the board for many years. I was a president for a term. I ran the, uh, I was a 
nature competition chair for, for a couple years, and I was a competition chair for a couple years. And then life just got too busy with work and travel, and um, life tends to pull you in a lot of different ways. And the reason I, I, I want to tell you this is that I got into photography because <clears throat> it, it made my life slow down. It made me stop, look, focus, go to a shoot, not take 200 images, but focus on five or six or 10 really good ones from different angles. So that parlayed into being involved in a club and every one of these picture rails here, I'm fabricated and hung and the, I built the bookcase in back where all the library books are on. and. I almost got too involved with the club that I, I had to just kind of take a break. So I've been absent for about three years. So when Bev sent the email out about mentoring, I thought eh, that'd be a good way to kind of jumpstart, kind of get back into. I always liked showing up on the Monday nights, uh, the very first night of the Fundamentals of Good Photography, the camera familiarization class. I really like sitting down with some of those brand new students and going over the camera, showing them um, the, some of the ins and outs, uh, where their functions are. If they don't know, they should know, and they should go find out where they are. Um, so I'm willing to take a beginner. I do shoot Nikon. I could figure my way out from a Canon or a Sony, but I prefer Nikon. Uh, my availability is I still work full time. I'm a year or so away from retiring, and that'll just be part time because I don't know what I would do seven days a week. Um, weekdays, evenings. Saturday or Sunday morning, can give up a couple hours, certainly. Timeline, I don't care if it's two months or eight months, what have you. As far as going over images, we'll pull up a coffee shop and a laptop and look at your images, uh, go over uh, some, a little bit of post-processing, that's not what this is about, but there are some things in post-processing that every photographer needs to know before you go to that next level. Um, certainly what your camera can do, I mean, shutter speeds, uh, depth of field, uh, focus lengths, um, all the things where you can actually go out and take a great image. But one thing that, I think it was Diane Funk, I don't know if Diane's still alive or not, but she's been a member forever, that she said to me once, she said, to be a successful photographer, don't go copy someone's style have your own style. It's okay to copy a concept, but you have to have your own style. You just made the point, Dave, that we've seen how many pictures of waterfalls here tonight? Six, I think you said. How many more do we need to see? You know, I mean, perhaps from a different perspective, no one was laying in the water taking a picture of the waterfalls, but we see so many of the same images I want to teach someone how to develop their own style. And you'll see kind of what I'm getting at here. Left arrow? Nah, me. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> seven. Seven. So I had to go dig this up. 2008 Cumberland, Maryland. Uh, HDR image, which at that time cameras didn't take HDR. So this is, this is post-processing. And that's like midnight. I wouldn't go there right now. Uh, Youngstown. I shouldn't have put this in here because that is a um, infrared image. It's a camera where the sensor actually has been changed to only capture infrared light. Um, but I'm into creative photography. So that's probably why I put it in here. There's a little bit of post-processing in this one. You have to do some channel swapping. but. Um, the camera only captures infrared light, which is the very white uh, part of the, the leaf, the uh, foliage it collects. I like to shoot sports. I like to shoot uh, dance, action. This is a verb ballet, which I've had m multiple opportunities to shoot. I really like shooting and processing black and white. I actually had an image in 2016, won the Solon, what the hell is it called? Solon Focus. It was a black and white dahlia. It's another verb image. Very tough because hardly any light and you have to stop the motion. 
that actually has been published in three national magazines and popular photography in China. And I do like macro, close up or macro. Just gives you a different perspective. It is the husk of a tamatillo, which is a cross between a Mexican pepper tomato and the husk is kind of a green leafy husk. I grow them in my garden. It's used in a lot of Mexican verde sauces and the husk overwintered, so you would call that a leaf skeleton. So I picked it up one spring, put it on my workbench because I knew there was a picture there someplace, but I didn't know where. So after several hundred pictures, I put a piece of whiteboard underneath a piece of glass in a darkened basement and light painted it with a light pen. And I thought the shadow was more interesting than actually the husk itself. That's me, any questions? Uh, weekend, or weekday evenings, I still work full time. And then Saturday or Sunday mornings, we can carve out some hours. And then certainly we can carve out hours someplace for any kind of review or post-processing work. Those were dress rehearsals, and it was kind of a private invitation, and I haven't gotten those emails in a while because I stopped going. So when I retire, I'll probably say, hey, can I kind of get back into it? But there's, I mean, there's ballet companies all over the place. I mean, this is just Cleveland, and it's a very small ballet company, and they all have dress rehearsals. And, you know, if you can, if you can wedge your way in there, you know, the people that, that are running it would just love copies of the images, you know, free. For free, yeah. So never hesitate to ask, especially when you say, I'll give you a, a, a CD or a, a flash drive of, of what have you. I did a couple, three years ago, I did three or four Dancing with the Stars events, and they just loved it. And I gave them thousands of images. I never saw one published, but that's just how it goes. Thank you. Um, Bev knows how many people that I'd like to sign up with. Okay, I, I would prefer a beginner rather than intermediate. Um, myself and a mentee can accomplish more one-on-one -on -one than if we go to a field trip. We go to a field trip, we're going to see all images that everyone sees every Friday night. Okay, I'll. I could probably have a field trip in my garden at my house for a hundred people and everyone would get great images. So, did that answer your question? So with, with your mentee, are you planning on trying to choose people or, or we, we can find, we can find a medium someplace, yeah. I mean, one thing I don't really gravitate to is portraits. Never have. Ne I just never have. I've never been comfortable with it. I, could I shoot someone from afar? You know? public space you can shoot anything you want yeah yeah but going up and talking to someone and that's just not me and yeah, never has been hi I'm Gary Wood I'm gonna skip through my pictures real quick to see what order they're in I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> okay, you, you can probably guess what the subject is. Um, my background. I was doing photography when I was in high school as, for fun. Um, once I got through college and actually got a job, I went back to college for adult education and took photography and took everything they offered and, and some inter independent studies with the professor at the time. Uh, Time Life book series, lots lots of different books. Um, moved to Cleveland in around 80, joined the club in 82, I think it was. 
Um, in 87 or 88, life got too busy. I quit participating. I was just too busy. And after I retired, I came back. And in between, I did some photography, but not as much as I wanted to. So I told Bev a couple of years ago that my specialty will be birds in flight. Um, this spring, when we went out, uh, the birds weren't there a lot of the time. So I think what I want to say is birds in motion. This obviously is what in flight is. It's one of my latest ones. Um, I spend the winter in Florida, so a lot of these shots are from Florida. Um, but I think I'm going to say birds in action now, or birds moving. But flowers, insects, things outdoors, the metro parks, as somebody else said, any of the metro parks from, from Cuyahoga National Park to Sandy Ridge, anything in between, along the lake shore, all of those are open. Um, but I think we've got to be more versatile because the birds aren't always there where they're expected to be. Uh, by the way, I think that's an eastern puffer fish that it caught. If you zoom in, you can actually see the fish clearly. Um, I'm a canoeist. I used to do a lot of whitewater canoeing. That's part of the reason why I didn't participate in the club. I had so many other activities I was doing. And uh, I kept my canoe. And I now do the Wilderness River in Florida. It's called the uh, Southern Hillsboro Wilderness Preserve. And so this is taken from my canoe. That's obviously the wood stork uh, among the cypress swamps. Oh. Can I tell a side story? OK. So um, among my careers was a physics professor. And after I retired, I went to work at Baldwin Wallace, did some courses there for them. And they pay very well. And I had enough money to buy a new system. So I went to Dodd, and I went to Pixel. I ended up uh, picking the same camera in both stores, researched it, decided to buy it. It's a Panasonic Lumex G9, designed for wildlife photography. Got all the lenses for it. I was happy as could be. I'm on the river. I grew up on a river. I'm very confident that I knew what I was doing. And I'm, I'm running a little trolling motor on a canoe. And when I, I hadn't been on this river that much before, and it was flood stage. Uh, you couldn't see three inches into the water. And there was a, usually you can tell where there's rocks and trees by the way the rip surface ripples. This one didn't ripple. I think it was a fork in the tree. The motor got caught in the fork. The canoe flipped within about two and a half seconds, if, if that long. Um, and with all my canoeing experience, I didn't have a chance to, to, to stop from getting dumped. And the new camera, the entire camera system went into the river. Um, I had it insured. I got it replaced. They actually paid like 95% of it. Yay. <laughs> but, but um, this is, this is where this shot was taken. Not that day. This is another year later. But, um, so that's the kind of thing I do. Um, this is at one of the parks in St. Petersburg. Um, this great egret hangs out there all the time. I get up and go early in the morning. And so the sun's behind me, and I get nice shots. Um, what do I want to do? I, I do small groups. I try to figure out what your schedules are and accommodate you. I try to figure out a day when we all can get together and go out. I prefer to do early morning or late evening, the golden hours. But it doesn't always work out that way. I try to go to the metro parks or some other outdoor area. I try to find a spot that's convenient for all of us. We, I send emails back and forth, and we coordinate. I start with a meeting somewhere at a restaurant like um, Panera's. And bring your laptops or something to show your pictures on. Let's get to know you and what you like to do. Um, I can critique your pictures. We can meet again to critique. I can make some recommendations about post-processing. Um, I have a large hand, well, I shouldn't say large handout. I have a densely packed handout of a couple pages long that's primarily focused on bird photography flight, photo in-flight photography for birds. So I, I give you several ways to use your camera to do that. Um, I'm looking for intermediate photographers. I'm not trying to help you with your particular camera or the fundamentals. This is a fairly challenging topic. 
which is why I prefer it. Um, so I need you to be familiar with your camera, and I can help you take these kinds of photographs, subject to weather and the birds, okay? But again, we can do insects, we can do flowers, we can go to the zoo. I'm very flexible. Time-wise, I'm retired. Um, I prefer weekday mornings and evenings because the parks are less crowded and you're more likely to see the wildlife. If we have to do it on the weekends, we can. Those spots that are trailing the bird, I think those are water droplets coming off of it. Um, sandpiper, I believe. I forget which type of, I, I do look these things up, I don't remember them. Um, it's, it's a type of sandpiper, I believe. Yeah, but I naturalist and it's very helpful. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. This would, this would have been in Florida in March, a breeding season. Yeah, so that's, that's really the time to shoot birds is in March and Florida, on the, you get the flyaways and all the preserves they have there, it's wonderful. Okay, um, what questions haven't I answered? <laughs> you pay your own way. <laughs> um, any, any other questions here? Okay. Um, I grew up near Tampa on the Alify River, and I now spend the winters at St. Pete Beach. Um, parents have died, we sold the house. The area has something like 20 to 30 times the number of people as when I graduated from high school. It's not, it's not, it's not the old Florida. But the, the, uh, the, w there, there's a cabin I like to rent in March on the Asilla River up in the Panhandle. The storm surge there is expected to be 10 feet above ground level, and this cabin is on, is right on the river's edge. I mean, you step out onto the dock and it's gonna be underwater. Yeah, and the place I stay in St. Pete is expecting six to nine feet storm surge. Yeah, um, well it's better, last hurricane they were saying 18 feet, so it's, <laughs> it's not as bad. But uh, I, I have, I decided long ago not to buy anything in Florida. Any photography mentoring questions? Okay. State, did David get in? Oh, there you are. <laughs> All right, I'm Dave Grimmer. I work, I referee soccer, and I take pictures. So, just came from a game tonight. So, um, for me, I mostly do wildlife, especially in the winter time, and I like to do cityscapes and uh, landscapes and a little bit of portrait here and there, but for the most part, it's landscapes and cityscapes and... Hello? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, I shoot Nikon, but I don't really care what uh, camera you have. I'm sure I figure it out with Google. So, uh, and I also do night photography, so I will do Milky Way, but uh, you know, we're really getting at the end of the Milky Way season, so the opportunities probably really won't be that great. Uh, Probably October would be the only time if, if all the conditions are right. Uh, but, you know, I have no problem with going on until the springtime of next year if Milky Way is really what you want to do. Uh, as far as availability, uh, I don't plan on starting really until October. I'm going on vacation in a week and a half, heading out west for uh, until uh, probably the third week of uh, September. So I know when I get back, I've got the. Uh, a few tournament weekends. So we won't start until October. You know, October we'll probably really look at landscapes and fall colors and stuff like that. I do like to travel. So if you want to come with me, uh, I mean, I, I go out and I go all day. I mean, I plan on driving to New York. I plan on going down to West Virginia to get the grist mill at Glad Creek. Uh, when I go and do wildlife, I leave first thing in the morning and I come back late afternoon. So you got to like to go out, you know, so. Uh, but you can, if, if you just want to do cityscapes with me and stuff like that, yeah, that can be in the morning and that can be in the evening for just an hour or two and then go back if that's all you're interested in. 
Uh, now, I don't remember what pictures I gave, so, oops. So from a wildlife standpoint, I really like to do owls, birds of prey, uh, eagles, hawks, uh, and ducks. Those are what I really primarily get into. So the owls, I really start in around November when the leaves fall off the trees. They're a little bit uh, easier to find. So if, if owls are what you're interested in, you know, I certainly help you learn how to find owls because they're certainly not easy to find. Um, so cityscapes, I just did that a couple weeks ago from the rock and blast. So I do like to do night, nighttime photography. Um, uh, like I say, I do drive a lot. So I think this was a November, I can't remember if that was last year or the year before. You know, so this is like a November picture. I drove out, did a sunrise at Marblehead, and then went over to Ottawa National Wildlife and did wildlife for the rest of the day. So, so I do like to go out a lot. Uh, you got to walk a lot. So, um, the grist mill. I'm planning on going that this this year. I, I think I took that in 2019. My wife and I went to West Virginia last year, but you know, you had to book it like a couple months in advance, and of course, we missed the fall peak. So I told my wife this year. I'm waiting until it's right, and I'm just driving down there, taking my picture and driving back. So if you don't mind being in a car for 11, 12 hours, you know, tag along. And Milky Way, I, I did that one on my last mentor group. You know, we drove down to southern Ohio, and uh, we were up all night, and, uh, you know, we found this tractor that was uh, right along a field and took some Milky Way photography. So I think that's it. Uh, like I say, don't plan on starting until October. Um, I do referee up until probably around the middle of October, maybe near the end. So for the most part, it'll start off Saturdays. But once I'm done uh, refereeing, you know, Saturdays, Sundays, you know, we'll be open. And, and like I say, I'll go in until soccer starts again in March. So, you know, like I say, mostly during the winter, it's, it's wildlife and, uh, you know, cityscapes. But October will mostly be, you know, fall colors, landscapes, and stuff like that. Any questions? Yes. We can. I've only mentored once before, so I'm kind of informal. So do whatever whatever people want. All right, I'm the last mentor up, and then we have a couple commercials. <laughs> Bev Kenworthy, as probably most of you figured out by now, I live in North Ridgeville. We spent our first 17 years in Ohio in Strongsville, downsized, and now I live across the street from the Eagle's Nest at Sandy Ridge. For the last several mentor uh, rounds, I've done birds. And this time, I am, Jackie's not mentoring with me. And so I thought, well, I'm going to spread out a little bit and get back into some things other than birds. So we're just going to kind of hit and miss and see what anybody feels like doing. I enjoy landscape probably even more than birds, but kind of got more back into the birds during COVID because we didn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're going uh, to Patagonia and the Falklands and Antarctica in February, and so I have to get started on landscape again. So I have included a few uh, photos that I took. Uh, the one with the water and the sunset is uh, in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, or actually in Louis, Delaware, on the Louis Canal that runs from Rehoboth. Uh, my son used to live there and we were, he wanted us to go out to some beach for a sunset and we're going over this bridge and I'm looking over and I'm screaming, stop! But the, you know, my family's used to that and so are our friends that travel with us. Back in the fall, we went uh, on a trip to take in the last of our 50 states, which were the Dakotas. As far as I'm concerned, the Dakotas, like the first two thirds at least of the Dakotas, both of them are like flyover. But when you get to the western part, it is beautiful. And this was actually into Wyoming at Devil's Tower. 
and we decided it was only a few hours away. We would go see it. Uh, we had seen other parts of Wyoming before that. And we got there and spent most of the day. It was beautiful. I thought it was like you drive up, you see it, and you say, wow, there it is. And it makes you think of Richard Gere and the mashed potatoes, which of course we did. But we hiked it, and it, it was just beautiful. It was raining and drizzly that day, and people were still climbing it in the rain. Idiots. One of the things that I enjoy getting into now and then, and I haven't done it for a while, is lens ball photography. I don't know how many of you have a lens ball, have ever tried to use one, have any, had any success with one. I'm kind of hit and miss with it, but I've also kind of figured it out over the years. And the bottom picture is what I was looking at through the lens ball to give you an idea of uh, what you can do. And, you know, depending on uh, your f-stop and your depth of field, you can get a very, you can get a sharper background by keeping the ball closer to the subject, you, you dial up you know, to say F22 or something, you might get some uh, form in the background. Or like I chose to go with about a 2.8 and uh, totally mute the background. What's supporting the ball? What? What's supporting the ball? Okay, well, there's a little Photoshop involved there. I bought, all right, when I'm doing a lens, lens ball pictures, I carry two tripods, one like old crappy tripod made of plasticky garbage. And I think it's like Sunpack or something. It costs, you know, $50 or something. And it's perfect because I have this uh, thing. A lot of these uh, lens balls come with a clear plastic or acrylic base. And unfortunately, if the sun's shining, and I don't care about the temperature, uh, it picks up a lot of heat. I was out with a friend one day, and hers was throwing sparks and smoking <laughs> because it you know, got a lot of heat. I ha bought this thing. It was expensive, but for what it seemed, but it works so well. It's a tube with a Swiss Arca bottom, so you can clip it right onto your ball head. And, um, or excuse me, your, your, uh, your, yeah, your tripod. And it works really well because it's a clear plastic tube and it dissipates the heat. So the ball doesn't even get warm. So anyway, there's a lot of really cool things you can do with it. And if anybody would be interested in that, it's something we could play around with. I also, I, I do some macro. I am no expert, but I love anything with water drops. And sometimes I get a picture of me in the water drops. I don't think I did then. I think I was lucky enough to get some flowers and all in the background. but. You're going to get some flowers. Take a little spray bottle with just water, no glycerol or anything like that. It destroys the flowers, but a little bit of water doesn't usually hurt flowers too much. And as always, I love wildlife. This was in uh, Spear Canyon in uh, South Dakota. And we were just driving on this road. We went back to see some waterfalls and they weren't all that great, but we stopped along the road and we saw some people standing there looking and we're like, what in the world is there? So we stopped, get out of the car, and there were about five or six of the sheep climbing up the side of the cliff up to the road. That, and that picture, other than to get rid of some crap in the way, is not cropped. That's how close he was. They didn't care. They were used to people being there. And I shoot Nikon. I have no objection to any other kind of camera. But know how to change your settings, because I'm not going to figure that out with you. Um, I would hope that you would know that much. 
I take all levels of shooters. It doesn't matter to me. I just got the Nikon Z8. It's one of the first pictures I took. That little spotted sandpiper was in my yard. And he was just running around on the edge of the pond. And oh my god, that tracking works so well on that camera. It just grabs the eye and stays on it like nothing I've ever seen before. It's really great. So anyway, I meet on Saturday mornings. Also meet on Thursday evenings at 7.30 for a Teams meeting to critique and review what we did the week before. I'll be starting at one of the field trips I'm going to show you a little bit of info about that's coming up. And that would be on September 10th at Back to the Wild. So if you haven't already bought a ticket, you're going to need to. I think you've got another week before you can't buy tickets to go to back to the wild. <clears throat> but um, it's a great way to, particularly raptors that they have there, they set them outside. They are uh, leashed, but gently and kindly. And these are animals that cannot be let go <coughs> excuse me, back into the wild because they wouldn't be able to make it. So they use them as part of their ability to fundraise. And so your money that you're paying to go back to the wild uh, goes directly to back to the wild. But anyway, um, this weekend is Cleveland National Air Show. There are two tickets left for Sunday, and I believe 13 left for Monday. Saturday is sold out. Uh, Barb had updated me this afternoon on that. <coughs> if you've ever thought about taking pictures of planes, it's a hoot. The first time I did it, I thought I would never be able to do it, but I did. It's not even that hard. If you've taken birds in flight, these guys follow a path. Birds don't. They're very erratic. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so even parachuters are a little more dependable. So this is the Golden Knights they have there every year, and they are there this weekend. That was one of the trick planes they had flying upside down, because why not? And this was, I guess, two years ago when we had the Thunderbirds. Last year, that was so rained out, was the Blue Angels. So I don't think I have a whole lot of pictures of those guys from last year, but this was the last time the Thunderbirds were there. Set your exposure up a, uh, maybe a plus one. Uh, once you get your camera set, because of the white planes against the darker sky. Otherwise, your, your, uh, your metering is going to tell you how to take it, and the planes are going to come out kind of grayish. So that's something you can do. So if you want to go to the air show, you'll have to go on our website or use the email uh, that was sent out this afternoon about it. Click on there. You have to buy it through PayPal. When you get online to buy your ticket, you have to buy your parking pass then or you will not get one. They are not allowing you to uh, buy a parking ticket on site this year. It's all online. So that has to be considered. And some more crazy people in planes. So there's availability for Sunday. There's availability for Monday. All the seats are front row along the runway in box seats. And then again, back to the wild. I think it's only 22 bucks, but I might not be exactly right on that. September 10th, 10 to 12. It's about 10 minutes off of the turnpike. And this is the kind of photo ops you get there. 
I know David said he has trouble finding uh, owls now and then. You don't have any trouble finding them there. This little screech owl was just looking up. I mean, you know, it was like, how would you ever find that? And uh, the barn owl, uh, the Sowet, northern Sowet owl, they put him in a uh, pine tree, little hemlock, and he just kind of sits there and and he's adorable. It looks like a toy. <coughs> and even the vulture is pretty with the flowers. Uh, a uh, red tail. And two eagles. So I am going to encourage everybody. I, they'll take up to 60 people, I think. And we've only sold 20 some tickets. So there's a lot of availability for Back to the Wild. And I would say go there. Even if you are, don't have a great interest in birds, it's still a great day out. It's a beautiful property and it's a lot of fun. And there's plenty of us that do birds that go. And if you need help, we can help you out. Okay, very quickly on the sheet you have, as of right now, if you signed in on that sheet, uh, on the table there, uh, I will accept an email early from you. It's, oh, it's 9 o'clock anyway. So anyway, you can grab your mentor quickly, menteecps at gmail.com. That is where you send it. You need your name, your city, phone, email, your availability to say, yes, I am a current CPS member. Whether or not you've been a mentor or a mentee before, what kind of camera you have, your expertise level, and have, have you had some kind of experience or, or photo education, at least know how to turn your camera on at the very least. If you're using some software and up to three mentors you can choose. You're not going to get three mentors, you're going to get one. However, you can choose up to three because not everybody is taking a whole lot of people. So um, your person could be gone with it, with the first two or three emails that come in. And that did happen last time that within like two minutes, there were people already completely filled. So anyway, go for it. Send your emails. Yes. Can I ask Joe a question? Yeah. Um, I do work full time, so I can do most weeknights, and then uh, Saturday mornings and some Sundays. Um, we'll have to just we'll have to figure it out as we go along, but uh, for the most part, it's weeknights and Saturday mornings. <laughs> oh. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for anybody? Okay, I guess we're done. Thank you for coming out tonight. Hi, can I have everybody's attention for a minute? I have, Terry just gave me two uh, free tickets to Akron Zoo for this Friday. 
I can't use them, I know. I'm going to the air show practice, and I have a, my mother has a doctor's appointment in the morning. But if anybody would like them, they're here.